It's Bernie Goldbach. I'm Top Code and Good Social Networks, talking about Minecraft in the water and the wild with YMTFM and LIT.ie. We're starting with a tester, Dylan. He's five. A Minecraft for Mia. She's now nine. And back end technology delivered by young people and third level animators. The idea bring it all together, map it along a real place in the ground, and create a world with the water and the river and the wild. The whole story is being told on YMTFM. It's a youth media team blending together creativity from primary school to third level using integrated technologies like a Ricoh 360 camera, a little bit of Facebook Live 360. All these things cobbled together showing you can actually bring creativity into the Minecraft environment and into a 2D gaming environment using an amalgamation of technologies and creative thoughts both done by coders as well as creative illustrators. Some of the third level students have created characters which suggest that trees and foliage and plants can become wild things, things that threaten natural peace-loving creatures such as sheep, sheep that might be connected to other otherworldly features such as rising balloons or scary faces. We use design thinking sessions in the classroom and let me go through technology to combine these ideas, trying to figure out how could you have innocent sheep terrorized by evil plants. And the ideas evolved into assets which are going to be used by software developers in the LIT campus in Thurlis, a 2D game which, when mirroring some of the experience in Minecraft and some of the technologies we have off the shelf, might actually create something that is real to the hand and to the mind. Technologies we're using, well, we have to have a backup to the Surface Pro and the iPad Mini that we use as our primary technology. When we bring all this together, we actually start with a real environment, walking through that environment so we get an idea about how the lay of the land is along the banks of the River Shore in County Tipperary, Ireland. These rivers flood occasionally. The River Shore runs from a spring near Temple Moor all the way to the ocean or the Irish Sea near Waterford in County Waterford. The camera, the Ricoh 360 camera, allows us to capture a 360 degree panoramic landscape with a single snap or a quick video clip. On review, those clips give us texture, dimension, and an ability to model real things or foam walls for stuff such as the walls of the environment that may be in the game or in the Minecraft world. The 360 degree imagery through the Ricoh Theta S camera gives us a sense of slope of the land, shadows of the artifacts, and allows the young people who are creating these environments to actually use the technology as they document their living, growing, and evidence of technology or uh, of the environment around them. They also develop an awareness of things like the fences they might use in Minecraft or the walls they might build in Minecraft, or the living objects that might populate those imaginary worlds. Fences. And broken fences, because you need to keep the sheep or the horses inside. And Minecraft allows you to do that. If you don't know what you're doing, or the environment in which you're working, probably means you haven't done a real site survey. We get an idea of what it's like to work, run, crawl, jump, and move around the objects. It's important to get a feeling for the real world that you're trying to model. And to do it in a way where the collaborators are there side by side helping you along. Lots of real world interactivity here to produce the virtual world reality that is so authentic when you can combine easy technologies to review where you've been, to recall the sensations, the multimedia sensations, all within a mile of the school gates. And you can do this with drones. We have a drone that we're using. It's a DJI Phantom 3 Pro. It's piloted by some of the young people. Mia was eight when she first threw it. It's a 4K camera on board. And it's able to capture a lot of the surrounding environment while also giving you a certain kind of a feel for the real terrain. That kind of a special feel, that authentic feel gives you textures gives you dimension, gives you flow, gives you space. When mapped from above, the drone footage shows you how the river courses through the environment, 
how it's broken up by islands, by bridges, by low-lying trees, by shallow, shallow water, by deeper water, by raging water, by flood water, and by soft bubbling springs. All this you can see and hear if you walk the environment, and all this gives you an idea of how you can build an environment that feels real when you're using it. We bring all this stuff together and we watch a small developer, a young developer, take these visual cues and map it into a real Minecraft environment. The drone footage offers a vertical context so important because, as you know, a Minecraft world normally has tall structures in it. If you're using the stereoscopic images and you're viewing them through a Google Cardboard or a VR camera array, you're seeing something left and right. And when you're patching it together and you look at it through something like Minecraft or rather uh, HoloLens, a young Minecrafter can enjoy a mixed reality session where you're seeing something in front of you while inside of a real space. These young Minecrafters think of this kind of technology as native. See anyone special? And now you can start to build the world. In the vertical. That's what that says. So a river like this? Oh, no. Add some water. What are you doing? A fence line. When building, um, when building a place for my sheep, and I'm going to um, make... I learn a lot by asking the author what their creation really is. I don't know what just duplicated. In the hands of the testers, the software developers can get ideas about how to make the game more, more exciting. No, no. What do you tell us what you have there? Okay, I've got a blaze, slimes, I've got silverfish, zombies, and creepers. And I had skeletons. Uh, yeah. And what are they and doing? They're skeletons. I really don't know, but my blaze, I think, is sitting on is uh, burning. <laughs> Smoke. The door. Maybe no, not going to that. I think I'm going to choose this one. Until you actually start looking at how people use your games, it's impossible to actually know you're building the right kind of environment. Okay, so... What are you going to make? A docking place for the boat. For the boats. And we're not yeah. sure the plants versus the sheep so are going to have a boat involved, but it doesn't matter. So Possibility is there. The boats... And it's up to the software so developers to determine, well, are we going to have a flat game like Plants vs. Zombies, or are we going to have something um, else in it? The funny thing is, I'm going to have to put an animal on the boat if I want to keep the boats tied onto something. Okay. I really like seeing how the real world environment is actually part of the virtual landscape that you can create. It's important to put some kind of a title sequence on your work of art. This is the water in the wild. And this particular Minecraft game now sits in the iPad Mini. There's another iteration on a Sony Ericsson, a Sony Xperia Z phone that I have. And I think a third one that's on the iPhone 5 or our iPhone yeah. 6S that's in the house. Yeah. So interesting to think that a young child can have a hand-me-down phone or a uh, underutilized piece of technology and create something in their hands, in their mind, and then something that can be used in the real world to yeah. give them a greater understanding of how to combine all these elements of imagination, reality, virtual reality, and a cultural artifact. All okay. possible through Minecraft. Why is it that way? The water and the world. The wild. The water and the See? That what's happening here in front of us on this screen 
is similar to the creative processes used by high-end mathematicians, by inventors, by innovators. Science, technology, engineering, art, math, all these things are important, often stopping, starting with the simple thing as Minecraft in the hand. You're looking for bricks. We're really grateful for the technology loan test by Microsoft, that's Surface Pro 2, reaching the edge of its life. An iPad mini that Mia's currently I'm using. Make the oh, that's actually the glow, st uh, glow stones actually what I was looking for, but that won't work. The voices of the youth media team, YMTFM, interviewing some of the young students as they create this world, and then sharing it across YMT.FM. Why did start raining? Start raining. Just starts in Minecraft. <laughs> if you want to catch up with people in Ireland, used to Minecraft and the rain, you can come to the SESI conference, CESI.ie, in March in the Dublin in the Dublin uh, City University DCU. I'm part of a team that works with young students and software developers. We're on the campus of Limerick Institute of Technology in Thurlis and in Clonmel. All this creativity is just a joy to see and to work with, both the third level and primary school level. I expect that games developers will look at the sessions that uh, the students, the animators have produced the hands-on gameplay that okay. Minecrafters are doing. And at the end of the day, at the end of the month of April, well, something that so should be possible to be compiled game. and released as a simple 2D game. This is a collaborative project using the skills and technologies available on the campuses of the Limburg Institute of Technology in Clonmel and in Thurlis. This is the island I like to stand on and there's lots of flowers over there and spiders and these things and okay I need to go get my boats. If you want to get a hold of us you can contact me Top Golden on all good social networks. You can follow the ICT hashtag on Twitter and see how coding and Minecraft fits into immersive technology or immersive education. You can connect up using the hashtag EdChatIE so on Twitter, where Minecrafters often lurk on a Monday evening talking about how to integrate this clever kinds of um, education technology into their curricula. All these things are free, except for your time. This is my cottage. And oftentimes you'll find that the best assets like, are the ones that the young students pr produce on so their own I time, don't have to put any according to a brief it. you give them, an imagination that you unleash. Picture. It's all part of the Minecraft experience I've seen from primary school to third level. So that's it. That's me, Rose Gold, on Twitter. In, get in, 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 in. Representing Limerick Institute in, Technology in, as we evolve in. this as a game that can be used for Plumbo Junction Festival. No, stay there, stay there. Catch up with us with ICT EDU in May. Or by following a story with the youth media team. Busy Bees and Clonmel helped pull together some of this along with Sussy Khan. Thanks for listening to Minecraft, The Water and the Wild. <laughs>